It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. On Thursday, the European Parliament called on the European Union to impose an arms embargo against Saudi Arabia, saying that Britain, France, and the EU governments should no longer sell weapons to a country accused of targeting civilians in Yemen. EU lawmakers voted 359 in favor, 212 against, with 31 abstentions for the formal call for an EU embargo. Although the vote is not legally binding, law lawmakers hope it will pressure the European Union to act. Britain and France are the main European suppliers of arms to Saudi Arabia, with the UK providing $3 billion in sales since Saudi-led forces began military operations in Yemen last year. Germany also licensed arms exports of almost $200 million to the Saudi Kingdom in the first six months of 2015. Yemen has become one of the worst uh, humanitarian crises in the world. Nearly 6,000 people have been killed since the coalition entered the conflict, almost half of them civilians. According to the United Nations, the UN says also that famine looms as half the population or 14 million people face hunger. Previous reports by Amnesty International said the Saudi-led coalition has bombed targets including schools, the Center for the Blind and the Mid San San Frontiers Hospital. Joining us now from New York to discuss all of this is William Hartoon. William is a senior advisor with the Security Assistance Monitor and the director of the Arms and Securities Project at the Center for International Policy. William, so good to have you with us. Yes, thanks for having me. So, uh, William, if this call has no legal weight, what is it attempting to do? Well, I think they're trying to draw attention to a horrific catastrophe that's been ignored uh, in a lot of the major capitals of the world. Um, and I think the fact that the vote was almost uh, on the order of three to one, I think that will help propel the issue and make it more visible. Uh, there is opposition among civil society groups in the U.S. and the U.K. and Germany uh, to selling to the Saudis while they're prosecuting this war in Yemen. So this will just elevate the issue to another level, I think, where governments will have a harder time ignoring it. Right. And could it eventually lead to an embargo? And if it does, what kind of measures has to go into place for a successful embargo? Well, you know, I, I think to get through the process, you would need to sway the major players. So it's a tool in the hands of, say, the UK movement and others to move their governments in the right direction to bring this embargo about. Um, I think what would be needed is to suspend uh, not only future licenses, but licenses that have already been granted so that there's not kind of a uh, grandfathering in of sales that have already been agreed to, but that there's an immediate uh, cease in delivery of things like ammunition, bombs, things that are being used to uh, carry forward the conflict. Okay. So this is, uh, William, one measure. Uh, however, the greatest uh, arms sales are being um, sold by the United States to Saudi Arabia, and I understand also countries like uh, Canada, in spite of the fact that they have some sort of pro progressive government who says they want peace in, um, in Yemen and in the Middle East to continue to sell arms uh, to the Saudis. Uh, do you think that um, there needs to be a greater effort uh, worldwide to prevent uh, Saudis from getting these arms that's obviously creating this huge humanitarian crisis uh, in Yemen. Yes, I think the international community has to get together behind the notion of cutting these sales to the Saudis. And that'll take some hard work, even in places like Canada, as you mentioned, where the government's hiding behind the argument that the deal was already made, uh, but they can certainly roll it back. It doesn't seem to comport with their own policies on arms and human rights. In the United States, there's been a few members of Congress who have spoken out. Uh, Oxfam America has organized some efforts to raise this on the agenda. Uh, the issue of the use of cluster bombs has drawn criticism from Capitol Hill, but uh, there's, there's work to be done. But any progress in Europe, I think, will spill over into the debates in the U.S. and Canada and uh, help campaigners here. 
And uh, who, are, who are behind, who are the major blockers of this kind of an uh, embargo going into place? Well, I think in the case of the United States, the longstanding relationship with the Saudis, which originally was based on oil politics, uh, the promise that President Obama made to reassure them that they weren't tilting towards Iran despite the recent nuclear deal, and of course the U.S. arms manufacturers, for whom it's a huge bonanza. And as the Pentagon has cut back a bit on their domestic weapons buying, all the major companies are looking to places like Saudi Arabia to fill in the gap, uh, to sell tanks, to sell fighter planes, to sell helicopters, possibly to sell a new missile defense system, not to mention the, the bombs and missiles. So. Uh, there's sort of a full array of weapons in the pipeline, including an offer of uh, combat ships at a time when they are uh, carrying out this, this awful embargo. And those will take a while to get there, but the, even the offer is kind of almost an endorsement of the embargo. Right. And the crisis in Yemen, uh, William, has sort of fallen out of uh, media gaze largely uh, in light of what's happening in Syria and the, and the humanitarian crisis as a result of that war. Now, uh, getting back to Yemen, what's the depth of the problem and the crisis that the um, people on the ground are facing? Well, the UN has pretty much said it's the most uh, uh, terrible humanitarian crisis in the world, short of what's happening in Syria. And I think the difference is there's a little more, less complicated way to get at the problem, which is if you cut off arms to the Saudi coalition, uh, much of the damage will not be able to be done. Whereas Syria is a multi-party struggle, uh, there's complicated negotiations. It's uh, important to address Syria, there's no question about that. But I, I think it's a uh, it's a harder place to make a difference in the short term, whereas I think an embargo on the Saudis to keep them from attacking Yemen further would uh, be more easy to accomplish in the short to medium term and have an immediate uh, positive impact uh, on the people in, in Yemen. All right, William, we'll be keeping an eye on this, and I thank you uh, for joining us with such short notice. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.